Oh wow. I am uh, I'm shocked. I, I well, first of all, we have 2 minutes to go before we start a regular broadcast, but I was setting up this morning and when I went to open our weather app, it was through our snarky weather app that I learned that Tony Bennett passed away this morning and I am I am just shocked and I'm having a hard time articulating my thoughts from everything I've read and everything I've seen and certainly everything I've heard, I cannot think of a more, of a kinder man, a kinder artist. Um, eight decades worth of performing, he mastered the American songbook like no other. Um, he struggled with disease in the latter part of his life and and I am just completely saddened by this news. So I thought I would just react to it and, and mention this to you. If you didn't know this happened, well, it happened. So today would probably be a good day to whip out some Tony Bennett music and maybe have a drink or two in his memory. Wow. I am I I cannot even articulate uh but you know the show must go on and all we can do is keep him close in in our memory I am absolutely speechless and grateful of the fact that most of coffee and headlines is scripted because now we can go on with with our broadcast very, very, very sad. news got the best of me that's for sure oh how sad good morning everyone welcome back to coffee and headlines our morning get together live here on facebook it's the end of the week and it's the beginning of the weekend i am so excited because this is going to be a weekend full of fun activities for me with friends and loved ones but again, as I was mentioning earlier, I am totally devastated by the passing of Tony Bennett. Um, th this will most definitely become a topic in one of my upcoming music appreciation lectures. In fact, uh, yes, Epiphany, that's what we're going to do. In the next month, I still have two dates. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have two dates that I haven't fine, uh, formally decided what we're going to do. And we have to, we have to pay tribute to Mr. Tony Bennett. Uh, I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's doing good. Of course, this is Coffee and Headlines where we get together to connect through good news and sad news, to connect through our city, Puerto Vallarta, which is our common thread. As a community of English-speaking locals, we take a look at headlines. We take a look at your comments and... Um, and, um, oh, <laughs> this will be an interesting broadcast to get through. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. As always, I want to encourage you to let us know if you're watching live for the first time. If that is the case, please let us know <clears throat> by writing the word new in your comment. We'll be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome. And if you have something really important to say, that you wish for everybody to pay attention to, that you wish for some reaction. Uh, it will help a great deal if um, you add a capital letter Q at the beginning of 
your comment. Okay, Paco, snap out of it. Let's do this because we have all kinds of fun and snarky things to go through today. Okay, enough sniffling. We have uh, amusing commentary about the perception of security here in Puerto Vallarta. We have more promises made by the government, and uh, we have yet to see whether they will be fulfilled or not. And of course, we have part two of our little adventure with uh, artificial intelligence as it relates to Puerto Vallarta. How much does um, artificial intelligence know about Puerto Vallarta? We're going to find out in the second half. But first, let us talk a little bit about the perception of security here in Puerto Vallarta. How safe is our city? This is a very popular question. Okay, so I'm going to have the sniffles all through this broadcast. I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to be a mess. Please indulge me. This is a popular question, and the answer may startle and amuse you, particularly when it comes to Mexico's own government. You see, you have the INEGI, which is Mexico's National Geography and Statistics Institute. They publish surveys on a regular basis on the perception of security in different cities, well, throughout the country for that matter, along with other topics. And in the latest study, based on the first quarter of the year, Puerto Vallarta was not featured among the top safest cities in Mexico. Furthermore, our municipality was one of the four with the worst perception of security in the state of Jalisco. Now, before you clutch your pearls, please know that this is not new. Puerto Vallarta has gone up and down and in and out of these surveys many times. What is amusing to watch is the local reaction. You see Mexico's Electoral Institute, which is a totally different entity, also has their own surveys. And two days after Inegi published their findings uh, where Puerto Vallarta was not featured, uh, the Mexican Electoral Institute declared Puerto Vallarta to be the safest city. <laughs> and of course, our mayor did not waste any time deploying his minions to post all over social media that we are the safest city in the world. And in interviews, he recently said, of course, we are safe. That's why we have tourists and investors arriving on a daily basis. Um, which says very little about what the city is doing or not doing to keep us safe, but that's our mayor, what can I say? More importantly, and um, snark aside, I wonder, I wonder how troubled or concerned are you about security on your daily lives here in Puerto Vallarta? If you have any comments, um, I would love to read them and I would love to empathize because I do appreciate that this topic of security can be um, can be very pressing on some of us and not so much on others. My personal take is, you know, Puerto Vallarta is as secure or insecure as our own decisions as we go around the city and Puerto Vallarta has security issues just like any other large city in the world. But I am intrigued as to how you look at it. Um, and of course, my bottom line is I try to be as careful as I can be when I'm out and about, but I can't help but to laugh at the fragility of our tourism-based fabric such that is, if a rip appears in the fabric with some statement that, I mean, personally, I trust the Institute of Geography and Statistics much more than a politically electoral-based research machine, uh, a research machine. But it is amazing to see how, as soon as the fabric rips a little bit, the minions seem to be deployed to quickly, quickly, quickly make the rip disappear. But maybe that's just me. Please feel free to share your thoughts, and we'll look through them later on in the broadcast. In other tourist-related news, I found it interesting to learn that over 70% of Mexicans traveling domestically or internationally would rather stay at a hotel and not pursue platform options such as Airbnb. Now, I could 
pull possible reasons out of my sleeve, but I'd rather not. Still, I found it very curious. I myself would rather stay at a hotel, although I had a fabulous recent experience in that wonderful Airbnb in Guadalajara. That said, I have pursued Airbnbs in the past, and once I've gotten to the place, the place left much to be desired. So I just thought it was interesting. But back to security and back to our dear mayor, Mayor Michel was recently cornered by a bunch of reporters with questions about the increasing number of crimes and harassment incidents taking place along the Pitillal Riverside Parkway in our city, the safest city of Mexico. And he has vowed to install lighting along the entire parkway to increase security. And he will do it shortly, he said. Now, when uh, the next mayor comes, please remind me to start keeping track of all the promises made. And then at the end of the term, we will pull out <clears throat> a big list of promises made um, just to see which ones were delivered and which ones were not. And here's another promise. Meet federal de deputy, federal deputy for Puerto Vallarta, Bruno Blancas. In a recent interview, he has vowed to ensure that the budget required to complete the Federación Bridge connecting Puerto Vallarta with the municipality of Bahia de Banderas will be considered in the 2024 federal budget as this would be the final opportunity for President López Obrador to deliver on his promise. Of course, I'll believe it when I see it. We talk about this bridge frequently, this bridge being the missing link between <clears throat> Puerto Vallarta and Nayarit um, and the completion of the highway on the Nayarit side and then the completion of the highway or the road on the Jalisco side, which would be fundamental once the new highway to Guadalajara or the, the not so new but incomplete highway to Guadalajara is, is finished. Whether this will happen, whether it will not, is unclear. Will the president deliver on this promise or better yet, have Mexican presidents come and gone without delivering on all their promises? Absolutely. So we just have to wait and see. But speaking of connections between one place and another, a new train connecting Mexico City with the new Felipe Angeles Airport is expected to be completed by the middle of next year. Presently, it takes as long as an hour and a half to reach the city from the airport by car. So this new train, I think I read, would cut that time in half. Of course, not everybody will want to take the train, but what do I know? Now, let us turn over to our weather forecasts just to see what's going on over there. And there it is. Rest in peace, Tony Bennett. That's how I found out. Not even four minutes before the broadcast. And um, that was a big slap on the face. Uh, 30 degrees right now. Humidity is at 68% and our Fahrenheit temperature is 86 degrees. Now, our weather forecast for this weekend says we're going to have thunderstorms today, light winds and a chance of rain of 32 percent, a high of 33 and a low of 27 for today. Um, it'll rain in the evening, it says, with thunderstorms overnight. And tomorrow, we will, it'll be a humid day with mostly cloudy skies throughout the day, a chance of rain of 10 percent, a high of 33 and a low of 27 with thunderstorms overnight again. I'll believe it when I feel it. And Sunday will be a humid day with mostly cloudy skies through the day, a chance of rain of 25%, a high of 32, and a low of 26. Now, now, what else do we have? Oh, yes, I have just a friendly reminder of our upcoming meet and greet it's coming up. It's going to be on the first day of next month. I am so excited. Tuesday, August 1st, from 6 to 8, we will get together once again at Whiskey Kitchen with our lovely friend Gina. And this will be yet another opportunity to meet some of the cluster members face-to-face. -face. We will have name tags, as we usually do, 
and we will sweat together and enjoy the summer heat and the humidity together and have cocktails and wonderful food together. So if you'd like to come out, it would be absolutely wonderful. Now, we have looked at 10 good reasons for English speakers to live in Puerto Vallarta, English speakers from the United States and Canada, uh, to live in Puerto Vallarta full time. Let me put this up on the screen and let me make sure that this is working properly. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Show keynote, show that. Uh, that's good. Let me just move it up to this one. There you go. So we have discussed. 10 good reasons for English speakers from Canada and the United States to move to Puerto Vallarta full time. And just to recap what we discovered that um, artificial intelligence told us, we were told that it is affordable. We have great beaches. We have great weather. We have friendly people. Um, we have lots of culture and lots of museums <laughs> or so it said. And, um, we have activities, we have great health care, we have, we have a great location, there's lots of English speakers, and there's lots of expats. Now, let's see what happens when you ask um, artificial intelligence to give us 10 bad reasons for English speakers from Canada and the United States to live in Puerto Vallarta full time. So, this is the reason why you should not live here. Number one, the language barrier can be a challenge. The language barrier can be a challenge. Even though English is widely spoken in Puerto Vallarta, there are still times when you'll need to communicate in Spanish. If you don't speak Spanish, you may find it difficult to get around, do business, or make friends. Now, this one I totally agree with. Uh, we've had discussions, some heated, about the language barrier. A lot of people come here thinking, well, everybody speaks English, I'm going to be fine until you have to go and get a bank account or you have to go and buy a new cell phone or heaven forbid you should choose to go to Pitillal or, or start exploring beyond the comfort zone of the tourist area in Puerto Vallarta. Yes, the language barrier can be a challenge, but anybody thinking of moving here or living here full time should be aware of that and should probably be duolingoing their Spanish uh, into your um uh, your brain cells or whatever. Number two, the bureaucracy can be frustrating. Dealing with the Mexican government can be a challenge even for native Spanish speakers. If you don't speak Spanish, it can be even more difficult. Well, this is true. Bureaucracy is different in Mexico than it is in any other uh, place, I am sure. And the bureaucracy in Mexico can definitely be challenging even for us Mexican nationals. So I have to agree with this one. Now, this one is funny because we just heard that Mexico has great health care. Number three is the health care system is not as good as in the U.S. or Canada. If you need medical care, you may have to travel to Guadalajara or another major city. Well, as I understand it, the hospitals are now really fabulous here in town. And again, I'm grateful that I haven't needed hospital care in forever. I would love to read your comments on that. Number four, the crime rate is higher than in the United States or Canada. Petty crimes such as pickpocketing and purse snatching is common in Puerto Vallarta. There is also a risk of violent crime, especially in certain areas. Well, thank you, artificial intelligence, for not elaborating on that or for elaborating in that. I don't know about this one. I don't actually know the numbers. But um, but again, we were just talking about security and security has as much to do with our own common sense practices than it has to do with the environment. So is the crime rate higher in the United States or Canada than in Mexico or vice versa? I don't know. Now, number five is going to make me clutch my pearls. The food can be bland. Mexican food is not to everyone's taste. If you're used to the more diverse cuisine of the U.S. or Canada, you may find Puerto Vallarta's food 
to be lacking. Now, I'm sorry to say that, artificial intelligence, you have really messed up on this one. Um, if there is a city in Mexico that has diverse cuisine, <laughs> it's got to be Puerto Vallarta. So if you're missing food from other places, you're in a good place if you live here. Now, as far as Mexican food being bland, oh my goodness, that would be the last word that I would use to discuss my own cuisine, but bland. I love it. I love it. So, and this other one is a contradiction. Number six, the weather can be hot and humid. Puerto Vallarta is located in a tropical climate, so the weather can be very hot and humid, especially during the summer months. Wasn't artificial intelligence just telling us that um, the weather was great <laughs> year round? I love it. Number seven, the cost of living is rising. Puerto Vallarta is a popular tourist destination and the cost of living is rising as a result. If you're on a budget, you may find it difficult to make ends meet. Now, I do find there is something to this one. Unfortunately, this perception uh, that if you're from another country, you have money is, is a sad and persistent perception. A lot of people think that uh, just because you're from the U.S. or Canada, you have like money to spare and that makes cost of living increase. That said, the cost of living is increasing everywhere. So I don't know about this one. There are things, aspects to it that I can certainly uh, subscribe to, but others not so much. Number eight, you may miss your family and friends. Moving to a new country can be isolating, especially if you don't have a strong support, a strong support network in place. You may find yourself missing your family and friends back home. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we have to do our homework. I am constantly humbled and, and look at with admiration, look at people that I've met that have moved here recently, some of them friends of mine, that have so quickly developed their own support um, circle locally with new friends and new families of choice. So yes, you will miss your family and friends for a time, but it is entirely up to us to build new relationships. And I think that is a personal quest. And I think you can have a good time if you are able to do that. And not such a good time if you don't act on this important initiative. And it has to come from within. I mean, people will welcome you, but if you don't do your own um, share of effort, to build a new support network, it will not happen just by the act of magic or something. Uh, number nine, you may not be able to find a job that pays well. The job market in Puerto Vallarta is not as strong as in the United States or Canada. If you're looking for a high paying job, you may be disappointed. Well, again, this is, this is generic. I don't know exactly what the job situation is for foreigners coming here. Um, so I cannot comment one way or another. I would love to read your comments to that effect. Although I see a lot of digital nomads now moving here, but of course they're not being employed locally. And not everybody wants to move here to work. A lot of people want to move here to retire. The question is, how do you wish to retire? Number 10, you may not be able to adjust to the culture shock. Moving to a new country can be a culture shock. Even if it's a neighboring country like Mexico, you may find it difficult to adjust to the different customs and way of life. Well, this is absolutely true. And I think this has a lot to do with how much research you do ahead of time prior to moving to Puerto Vallarta and who you talk to. I think there are a lot of people in certain industries here in Puerto Vallarta that are invested in making you believe that this is the safest place, that this is the most affordable place, that everybody speaks English, that everybody is friendly. And all of this is, of course, true to a certain extent, but it is very, very different to spend time here as a tourist or even as a seasonal person than it is to live here full time. And we've seen a lot of people adjusting absolutely beautifully. And we've seen a lot of people not 
adjusting as gracefully and that is just something that is bound to happen anywhere you go so there you have it this is how much we can trust artificial intelligence when it comes to puerto vallarta let me know your thoughts and that was that now we move on to our chit chat section i have managed to forget a little bit about tony bennett ah but we'll listen to some music of his later on today good morning to everyone that is here as always i'm looking at your com your good morning sam I'm looking at your comments about tony bennett absolutely uh hey eric it's great to read you. I know that you were vacationing in Valle de Bravo, and I am dying to hear more about your trip. I hope to see you sometime soon when you come into Puerto Vallarta again. Uh, Chris has shared a link, which we'll be able to look at later on. Um, let's see. Purim, pam, pum, pam, pum. Eric says, I wish the city would stop ignoring the homeless and drug issues in and around the Insurgentes area. I hear you. I hear you. And when it comes to safety, there are a lot of issues that the city could be looking at. Um, Albert says, I feel very safe in Puerto Vallarta. Funny timing. I was at a dinner party with old friends last night and they asked me about safety in Puerto Vallarta. I told them, don't drink and go home at 2 a.m. through alleys. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, whenever people ask me it, how safe is the city and they come from the United States, I always tell them, well, I don't visit schools anymore because, you know, there could be a shooter in a school. No, I'm just kidding. No, Mexico doesn't have crazy people like in the United States that go into schools and start shooting people randomly. Thank God. Uh, let's see. There's a queue here. Did you hear about the person that was robbed just after crashing, cashing 150,000 pesos in Caracol? I think someone from the bank told the robbers. Yes, I did hear this news. In fact, uh, there are news of people getting robbed after withdrawing money from banks constantly. It's just the, not the kind of news that I choose to share here at uh, Coffee and Headlines. Not to deny them, but again, we're not here to share things that we can find out about elsewhere uh let's see beep, 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 beep. alan says i've walked all over pb i've seen some sketchy things from time to time but have never been threatened knock on wood absolutely absolutely um as a gay man i feel more comfortable and safer in puerto vallarta than i do even in my liberal city of Austin, Texas, due to our political climate surrounding guns and anti-LGBT plus laws. I totally agree with you, Robert. It is unfortunate, though, as a gay man, to see gay tourists doing really stupid things when they're in town, like flaunting uh, their gayness and stuff. And some people are going to say, well, Paco, you've become such a conservative old man. But, you know, Puerto Vallarta is not a place to be wearing like skimpy Speedos in the middle of the Malecón. Puerto Vallarta is not a place to be kissing and holding hands with your spouse in around the city. I'm sorry. Some people may disagree with me, but you're asking for trouble if you do that. Mexico is still a conservative town and it is easy to be immersed in the safety of the gayborhood in Emiliano Zapata. And once you leave that safety net, it can be a completely different experience. So my wish for any person uh, visiting Puerto Vallarta, particularly any people, any gay men, um, is that you, you keep that in mind. And when in Rome, do as Romans do. Uh, let's see what else we have. Interesting. Cliff says, if it's just me and my wife, we prefer hotels. 
If it's a get together with our five daughters and their families, it's definitely more fun than an Airbnb. I totally agree with you, Cliff. But that's the experience I just had in Guadalajara with my dear brothers and and sisters. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's always the first question. Is it safe there? You know, I hear you, Pat. It, it gets tiring, you know, particularly when it comes from north of the border. You know, it's like I read the news coming from the United States. And I'm like, fuck, you know, you're worried about safety here. Are you serious? Uh, let's see. There's a cue from Claude. Claude, give a big hug and a kiss to Lucas right this moment, please. Also, we get to enjoy the new water sprinkler at Whiskey Kitchen. Oh, this is about, about our upcoming meet and greet. Yes, Whiskey Kitchen has a water sprinkler, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm schwitzing. Let's see what else we have. There's another cue regarding language from Albert. Medical issues was the wake-up call for me to learn Spanish. Ah, there you go. Uh, let's see. As a single lesbian, I realize there are only so many places in the world I am accepted. I have traveled much of Mexico and PV is definitely a more open place for me. That is good to know. And I'm sure that your remark, Pat, will inspire others. Thank you very much for that. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Claude says, I had knee surgery here and I can say the care was above and beyond the health system in Canada. Thank you for that perspective. Another cue from Mark Jennings. I ended up in the emergency room Sunday night. Ooh, Sunday night at Hospital Joya. Could not have received better care anywhere else. Thank you for that. And before I forget, I received a private message from our dear friend Christy, who told us me, who told me that her cataract surgery was very successful. Uh, putting pam pum pam. Let's see what else. <laughs> Sherry says, I love the food in PV. Yes. Great restaurants in PV, says Angelica. Yes. Absolutely. Kathy, who is a nurse, says, I have been very happy with the quality of healthcare in Puerto Vallarta. They do a great job, and I have no issues with any, with any of the care we have received. I cannot say the same thing about healthcare here in the United States. Uh... <laughs> Logan says about bland food, perhaps AI is pulling from the trip advisor reviews she read about all inclusive resorts in Puerto Vallarta or whatever we're call Puerto Nayarit or whatever we're calling it today. <laughs> love it. Ah, I love it. Oh, none of you are happy or many of you are not happy about the bland food remark. Um, Gary says, just my opinion, according to Google, Vallarta's population is 556,000. I think that's a little bit too high, uh, but this is the same size as Atlanta, Kansas City, and Oakland. While I have never seen headless people hanging from an overpass in the United States, I have not seen people running out of Walmart with 10 TVs in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We have our headless people hanging from our overpasses and you have your crazy random shootings in schools. I mean, every country has their own spin on violence, I suppose. Uh, do -do -do -do. <laughs> Bodless, I mean, headless bodies. I love it. I would be interested to see what ChatGPT says as compared to Google AI. Interesting. Uh, well, again, I, I asked bard from google for those questions and i will be spending some time with chat gpt over the weekend just to see a comparison <clears throat> um thank you for the playlists that you guys are sharing please remember that by design we these links will disappear from the chat as we don't uh allow any links on the chat this is not because this information is not useful it is simply to prevent people spamming us with things that are not relevant of course in this case robert your remark is very relevant i will definitely go back and listen to your recommendation and add them to uh our show notes in the coming days 
Lots of comments from you today. Lots of comments. And more comments. And oh my gosh, you are really chatty. Here's another cue. Even with the unexpected illness with my husband last year, we he was treated like the most important person with the local pharmacist. That's good to know. And that, I think, yes, I think we are at the end of your comments for today. Interesting, interesting discussion today. I really appreciate that. I am sorry I was not all together well with the news about Tony Bennett. Please spend some time listening to Tony Bennett today and spend some time enjoying the, your your loved ones and appreciating the people and the memories and the thoughts that you have around you that keep you happy and um, and appreciate your surroundings. I think we all should do that. I am going to the movies. I'm going to go see Oppenheimer today. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I cannot wait. Have an amazing day. Hug someone you love. Be thankful for what you have. And come back tomorrow. Take care. Thank you.